Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 578. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, I'm going to answer the question, is it better to buy stocks with dividends or stocks without a dividend to get more growth? Well, this question comes to us from listener Kathy, who wrote to me and said, Linda, do you feel it's important to buy stocks with dividends and a good rate of return or no dividend and an even better rate of return? Thanks. Well, Kathy, that's a really good question. And lately I've been seeing that people are getting really tangled up in a lot of this individual stock picking nightmare because people are not doing their research, at least the ones I'm seeing, before they're buying these companies. And they are finding themselves in a world of hurt. So I would rather that, rather than buying an individual stock, that you use exchange-traded funds or portfolios of stocks so that you have some diversification and you're not investing too much in any one company. So let's talk about the difference between a stock that has a dividend versus a growth stock. Most stocks that are paying dividends are more established companies. They're large companies that have a lot of cash and therefore they're able to pass some of that cash through to their shareholders. And that's called a dividend. And they do that to attract more institutional ownership, to attract people that want strong, stable companies in their portfolio, and just as an added incentive for people to buy their stock and invest in their company. The downside to companies that pay a nice dividend is that often they're not as growthy as other companies because growth companies would tend to take that cash and reinvest it back in the company because they felt that they could make more money that way. So if they felt that their company was a high growth company, they probably wouldn't pay out a large dividend. They would reinvest it and grow that company bigger and therefore hopefully get a better return on the stock. So you see the two strategies are very different and hence you're going to get pretty different companies. One paying a dividend is going to be completely different looking from a company that's a very high growth company. But which is better? Well, maybe it's a good idea to have some of both. And when you invest that way, professional investors call that a barbell approach, meaning you have some of one type of company and some of another type of company. So you might invest in some dividend paying stocks on the left side of your barbell. And on the right side of your barbell, you might have some growthier companies companies that are younger, faster growing, that don't pay a dividend or pay a tiny dividend because some technology companies do pay a tiny dividend. Again, the nice thing about having both in your portfolio is the large dividend paying companies have cash flow, they tend to be more stable, but they don't have the fast growth component. Whereas the growth companies can be more volatile, but they also can be volatile on the upside and give you more growth, more compounding. An example of a barbell style approach might be to invest in a dividend paying ETF that invests in companies that pay dividends. And you might wanna check out my podcast number 575, which is the top dividend ETFs year to date, or podcast number 527, which was the five best dividend ETFs in 2019 or even podcast number 215, which is companies with rising dividends for 25 years. Check those out for inspiration for your dividend ETFs. And then on the other side of the barbell, I would put something like 
a mid-cap growth ETF. That would give you an index. You're buying a portfolio of medium-sized companies that are bigger than small companies, but not quite as large as some of the mega caps or the large caps or those that are really large and paying dividends. So they have room to grow, but they're already proven and they're on their way. So I think that would be a really nice barbell to have, a mid-cap growth ETF plus a dividend paying ETF. Good question, Kathy. And I think it's a really good way for people to have the stock exposure in their portfolio without having to go with an individual stock because there's a lot more research to be done on individual stocks that you invest in. And I'm just not seeing that people are putting in the time and energy to really research companies. They're picking them more like throwing a dart at the wall or taking a tip of someone who recommends it on television or at the water cooler. So let's have some solid fundamentals behind the companies that we're investing in. And I think ETFs will do the job for you. So great question, Kathy. Thank you for asking it. And I hope that answered your question. Check back here for what ETFs are top performers on a one, three, and five-year basis so that you can get a long-term perspective on what ETFs are the best performers. I report on those all the time, so check back and be following along with some of the performance reports that I post periodically. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit that subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, we still have the review contest going for June. You can win my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audios valued at $197. You can win the Wealth Heiress book personalized by me and recently voted as one of the best wealth books of all time, or you could win a wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on iTunes that gets your name in the drawing one time. If you've read the book, you're already a wealth heiress, leave a review on Amazon that gets your name in the drawing one time, or if you do both the book review and the podcast review, that gets your name in the drawing three times. We're running this through the month of June and winners will be announced on the first podcast in July. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.